Well, more than 1,000 Afghan refugees will resettle here in Maryland, a little more than 1,300 in total. The White House says the number reflects the first group of nearly 37,000 people. According to two U.S. officials, many of these new evacuees requested to go to states where family and close friends live. Last week, Governor Larry Hogan met with an Afghan interpreter who recently resettled with his wife here in Maryland. He helped the U.S. military as a cultural advisor and translator. Lutheran Social Services helped the couple in their resettlement process. And joining us live this morning with more on their program is President and CEO of the Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Service, Krish Omara Vignaraja. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Thanks for being here. And how has your organization helped with the refugees that are coming in? Yeah, so we've done this for years now. Um, we've actually resettled nearly 10,000 Afghan uh, refugees here in the U.S. since the program began in 2009. And we are there from... Uh, start to finish. Um, we pick them up at the airport. We find them affordable housing. We, through the work of volunteers, will furnish that housing uh, with some modest furniture, even stock the fridge with culturally familiar foods. But obviously that's in the immediate term. Um, in the medium long term, we work to enroll their kids in public schools um, to make sure that they have access to English as a second language classes, um, even employment services. So what have you seen thus far? What are these folks going through? Obviously, so many of them are coming, um, having experienced trauma in Afghanistan. The journey itself was treacherous, getting into the airport, going to third countries, ultimately going to military bases, and then finally arriving in their final destinations. And so, um, you know, I think a lot of them are struggling uh, in a sense that they're conflicted. Um, there is obviously hope um, and relief in the sense that they will resettle here in Maryland and elsewhere across the country. But for many of them, they're leaving family behind, um, you know, parents, uh, uh, siblings. And so, you know, they fear for uh, their family under the rule of the Taliban. Um, but we know that they become our neighbors. They become uh, valuable frontline workers. And I think they're excited um, to enter Maryland and, and the region. And how can Marylanders help? How can they help these folks that are going through so much? Yeah, this work is time intensive. And so, you know, volunteers are critical. Uh, to meeting our mission. It's been amazing to see that we've had more than 46,000 volunteers sign up across the country, more than 10,000 just from Maryland and the neighboring region. So if you have any interest in getting involved in this work, we need people who can serve as mentors, um, people who can drive these families to doctor's appointments. So if you go to www.lirs.org, uh, we'd welcome your help. And then, of course, financial donations, affordable housing is a critical issue. But here in Maryland, uh, particularly in Baltimore, we have, I think, a real a great way to get people to come. Um, but, you know, we know that it's going to be time intensive. Uh, financial donations are critical to this work. So we really do hope that we'll continue to see the outpouring of support from our community. And lots of ways for people to help. Chris, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thanks again.